Welcome, welcome, and oh my gosh, what a blessing you all are. Thank you, music team. I want to invite you to join along in our call to worship song today, Surely the Presence. And surely the presence of the Lord is in this place, in this space, moving in and as and through each one of us. So as we gently close our eyes and relax into this sacred time together, we breathe in knowing that that is a breath of life. And we breathe out knowing that we give life. And this ever circulating movement of life and love and wisdom that is God. We have joined together this morning. We have answered a call. We are in the right place at the right time right now, opening our hearts, opening our minds, and settling in, surrendering into that support that God is. And as we do this, we express our gratitude with every cell of our body, with all the energy moving in and through. As we express gratitude, Thank you, thank you, thank you. And so it is. Amen. <sighs> welcome. Good morning and welcome to Unity of Joplin. I am sitting a little lower than usual, but hopefully everyone can see me. I wanted to welcome you for our service today. And it looks like I may have missed a slide. So just remember to check us out on Facebook. Hi, everybody in Facebook world. We love you. We bless you. We appreciate you being here. And we hope to see you in person soon. Let's join together for our congregational song, Love is the Answer. Stand if you feel comfortable. Let's use our voices and unite because we know that our words have power. When we add that vibration of our voices, it is even more powerful. And we know that this is the truth, that love is the answer.
let's join together in our statement of faith. Together, there is only one presence and one power active in my life and in the universe. God, the good, omnipotent. And now our mission statement. Together, our mission is to inspire encourage and affirm divine freedom within each other amen can we get an amen for this yes yes and our vision statement here at unity of joplin together unity of joplin is a vibrant progressive spiritual movement where all are welcome as we co-create a world that works for all. Yes. And we join together knowing that our energy is moving as we plan our move. So let's join together in our new building or our new spiritual home affirmation. Together, our next right and perfect spiritual home is waiting for our energy to fill it with love and peace we are ready to move let's say that last line one more time but louder we are ready to move yes yes and now we have our inspiration of the day with miss susie back thank you and it is very special today. Grace is our word. I walk in grace and peace today. I give thanks for the activity of God in my life that appears as grace. This divine gift manifests as the beauty of the world and people in it and as the comforting presence of God within and around me each day. I do not have to do anything to earn grace because it has not resulted from my attitude or actions. It flows from the infinite love of God within each person and surrounding every circumstance. It is the indwelling presence that sustains me in challenging times and lifts me in good times. I accept grace with gratitude, and I have stumbled along life's paths and received unexpected blessings. This boundless love fills my heart with bliss and peace. I live in the presence of divine and infinite love, beholding and believing each unfolding event in my life is leading me to my highest good. My grace is sufficient for you, and that comes from 2 Corinthians 12, 9. So let us together know that we walk in grace and peace today together we walk in grace and peace today oh, thank you so much Susie thank you so much what a wonderful time in our service I get so excited about this part because we get to give who doesn't love giving? It's like Christmas every Sunday, right? I love it. I love to give, 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 because you know what happens when we give? We receive. We receive. That's a truth. That's a capital T truth. And that is the truth of our laws of prosperity. So as we participate in that, I just want to invite everyone to acknowledge all the ways that you can give. If you're here in person, We'll pass this little offering basket around. We'll fill it up with love, with prosperity, knowing that this is what keeps our cameras rolling, our mics on, the lights on, the air running, the toilets flushing, right? We need all of those things, and we are so thankful that we have all that we need and more. 
So if you are online or if you'd like to donate online, go to unityofjoplin.org and you can press the, the donate button. Now that we have our new website, it's easier than ever to just click and donate there. You can also text GIVE to 833-368-0897. And I really like writing checks. You know, when I have to write a check, I get to practice my handwriting. If you want to write a check and send it, you can send it to P.O. Box 1207. And that's Joplin, Missouri, 64802. We accept, we love, and we are thankful for our blessings. So let's go ahead and do our prosperity blessing together. Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. And I am grateful. Amen. And thank you, Miss Carolyn. We're going to join in singing the Magic Penny. Once again, bringing that voice, that vocal energy in, knowing that it has an effect. For the dedication of these tithes and these offerings together these tithes and offerings are dedicated to the will and the work of spirit through unity of joplin for the highest good of all amen now we have amazing special music prepared
greatest thing in all my life is loving you. Good morning. It's so good to see you here. I see lots of new board members. Yay! Yes! Yes! Oh, before we start, I'm going to lose the mint. We're going to have a brief meditation. So let's just take that music in. Let's sink deep in the seats that we've chosen today, knowing that they are the right and perfect seats that support our bodies. Just like we know that as we follow the divine plan and we watch divine order unfold in our life, that we're being supported all along the way, no matter what shows up. So this morning, we take a moment to be mindful of all the things that we have to be grateful for. We start with one, give me a statement, a person, a place, a thing, a relationship. Breathe in the joy that we have. And we exhale gratitude surrounding this space of gratitude. And as we hold this, we allow other things to come in that we are ever so grateful for. We might see images popping up. We might see a list of things forming. And we breathe into this, into this space of gratitude, knowing that as we acknowledge a space of gratitude, it opens up more and more and more space to be aware of what we are grateful for. So as we continue to follow our body's natural breathing pattern, We allow this list, these images, this feeling of gratitude to overflow, cascading from our imaginations all around us. We feel invigorated within the cells that make up our body. as we let all that we are thankful for come to the surface, it allows all the other stuff to fall away. And we breathe into that release. As 
So just continue to feel that space of gratitude expanding and expanding beyond the physical body. beyond the physical realm. And as we hold these things sacred, we once again, we bring the vibration of sound into the experience, allowing the sound from the toning bowl to cascade like a gentle waterfall over us and through us expanding in gratitude as we bring our awareness back into this beautiful time and space. We come back feeling expanded, open, knowing that the source of this gratitude is love, appreciation and compassion. So as we use this energy to not only center us this morning, we use it to ignite our actions throughout the coming week, remembering just how grounded but open we feel when we focus on gratitude. We focus on what we are ever so grateful for and for all of these blessings in each of our lives. We acknowledge the energy that God is moving through each of these experiences. And so it is with a grateful heart. Amen. Amen.
to come up with about four different catchphrases <laughs> for whenever I'm platforming so you don't hear, good morning again. <laughs> oh, so I wasn't here last week and I missed you all so very much. But the week before, we had a little bit of a spiritual shakeup, right? Who felt it? Who felt it? Yes, yes. So as we started using some new metaphysically updated language, it can feel very different. So I want to start by sharing one of my favorite songs that I go to when I'm in this space of, ooh, this is new, I don't know what to do. If you know the words, join along with me.
Oh, Lord. <laughs> Show me. Guide me. Lead me. That is why I love this song. Now, I want to start off with a few definitions. The first being chaos, right? Who's experienced chaos in your life ever? <laughs> right? I don't know what I'm close to, too close to. <sighs> well, the revealing word, a textbook written by Charles Fillmore, obviously with the help of Myrtle, <laughs> defines chaos as disorder and confusion and discord, that chaos in the body and affairs results from chaos in the mind, which is that product of being a human being, having this human being experience. Within this chaos, we may see injustice. Now, Webster's Dictionary defines injustice as the violation of another's rights. It's wrong. The belief in injustice may be overcome by understanding the divine law of justice and fixing faith firmly in it. Charles says, the remedy for all that appears unjust is denial of the condemnation of others and self. He encourages us to say, I deny all condemnation, judgment, and criticism of myself and others. I'm going to say that again. I deny all condemnation, and judgment, and criticism of myself and all others. And myself part, you mean challenging for us from time to time, right? We're human. A lot of us have pretty similar experiences. So let's talk about the work behind this. The object of work, as Charles defines it, the true object of all work is to express the powers of one's being and to benefit mankind. So for just one moment, let's turn around and look at these 12 powers that we have hanging on our walls. Sorry for our online viewers, but look at these powers that we inherit by being. We have faith, strength, wisdom, power, imagination, understanding, will, order, zeal, elimination, and life. These are the objects of the work within our consciousness because as we work in consciousness to erase those persistent forms of manifest negation. So when we are manifesting these things that we don't really love, it's ours to go back and focus on the power, the true power that we have to work with. These are some amazing tools to work with. And lastly, relaxing. We might have chaos when we have <laughs> a, a new something come up. We might have chaos when we knock our mic right off of our face and our heart starts to race a little bit. It happens. So we seek that relaxation, that time of feeling centered once again, of letting go of tenseness in the mind and the body. It's what we do during our meditation time. It's so powerful. So as we loosen that tight mental grip that we have on ourselves. This is what we do in order that the healing Christ's life, love, and wisdom can flow freely through our being. Flow freely through our being. And today I want to share some writing by Reverend Dr. Paul Hesselbeck, 
who served as Unity Institute's dean. I thought I had my, yes, here we go. Got to give him all the credits. He's the author of eight books, including Heart-Centered Metaphysics, which is the text, the main text for all of the teaching within the Unity movement on metaphysics. Like I said, he spent 10 years as the Dean of Unity Institute over the spiritual education and enrichment program. We are so very, very blessed. I mean, woo, the things I was seeing, you know, this guy's a hot shot when you look him up. But I wanted to share some things from his book, Heart-Centered Metaphysics, a deeper look at unity teaching. Now we shared an evolved and metaphysically updated version of the prayer for protection that Paul worked with. And I want to share some of his intentions so that we can all start understanding while we're in this forward progress movement, because we are a progressive church, right? We're looking at this language of oneness. This is our goal, is, is to see and hear oneness within the language. So it's been a conscious decision. It means that we are aware of this choice to start speaking in a new way in a way that raises the vibration of our consciousness. The power of word is fundamental, Hesselbeck says, to classic unity literature. Now, I might get some giggles. Who out there has read Charles Fillmore? <laughs> right? Okay, was it easy breezy? Maybe, okay, thank you, all right, all right. So the goal here is not to stray away from our founders. It is to articulate in today's language what they held for us, the vision that they held for us, knowing that this movement would be here today. So in current day vernacular, this is where we're shifting to. Now, he gives a few examples, and I'll share them. Know that the word of God is in your mouth and in your heart. Rejoice that this is true, and speak the words of capital T, truth, with joy and power and love. Expect your words spoken and sung, right? to bring results, weed out all the destructive and negative thoughts and words and tones. And I will be the first to admit that that is not always the easiest assignment. This comes from Myrtle Fillmore's book, Healing Letters, in which she is giving advice to those who have written to her. The next comes from Christian Healing by Charles Fillmore. And this speaks to the power of our word again, because the word is the mind seed from which springs every condition. Great stress is laid on the power of the word, both in scriptures and in metaphysical interpretations of the scriptures. He says, all metaphysicians recognize that certain words used persistently, mold and transform conditions in our mind, in our body, and in our affairs, how we conduct ourselves in the world. And lastly, from Adam Smashing Power of the Mind, one of my favorite books by Charles, he says, words are charged with power and intelligence. They increase with use while material things decrease. So there is a strong focus here on our word coming from our founders, Charles and Myrtle Fillmore. Now our language has already shifted 
to reflect that changing time. We're working on this because most people would agree, as Hesselbeck says, that the use of this male, in quotes, language that was common well into the 20th century is now regarded as politically incorrect. Am I right? In today's society. In fact, it seems odd to read classic unity books that use this male-centric language so freely, and I have to agree. While we're reading these texts, we see he, 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 he. What about the she's, right? What about the them's, right? So, with this intention, Paul Hasselbach was rece- he received permission, he was given permission to write this text to update the early unity writings with gender-neutral language as long as it didn't change the meaning. Amen. Yes. Yes. We do not want to change the meaning, but changing the words changes the way that it settles in our mind. Yes, I'm not able to walk around right now, so I'm moving my body with excitement. Now, he goes on to say that further, the language in classic unity texts was rooted in that late 19th century and the early 20th century. And it was considered traditional Christian in nature. So, while keen or very, very particular eye sets of readers can discern these terms, he points out that used in unconventional ways, sometimes we have the ability to fail to notice and to continue to interpret them in traditional ways. We fall back into those patterns. It's, guys, it's a human thing. We're working on it. We're working together on this, right? So the ultimate goal here that Reverend Dr. Paul Hesselbeck has is the exploration for each person to become a heart-centered metaphysician by embodying and and expressing these spiritual concepts. Now, the first is he states that a metaphysician, a heart-centered metaphysician, deeply realizes the underlying unity and oneness of all. Secondly, he says that the metaphysician who is heart-centered, knows and understands the principles and laws of the ultimate reality or God. That third, we show up compassionately and lovingly as we apply and we practice these principles and laws in our own lives. I'm going to repeat the first part compassionately and lovingly applies and practices these principles. The fourth, compassionately and lovingly sees each and every person in the highest light, that Christ. So as I look out, I see Bonnie Christ. I see Elizabeth Christ. I see Jeremy Christ. I see Rebecca Christ. I see Christ expressing through each of you. And the fifth, a heart-centered metaphysician, when invited, quietly and humbly assists other people in understanding and applying these principles and laws in their own lives. So when we find ourselves in that space of chaos, we become that heart-centered metaphysician and we lovingly support those who are in this space. As the unity movement attempts to develop a new language and move into this space of a higher 
resonating consciousness together to expand it into the race or the mass consciousness, we develop a new language that more accurately and precisely conveys our beliefs here in unity. When we fail to do this, he states, being misunderstood reinforces the embedded theology of the listener or the reader. It reinforces the embedded theology of the speaker or the writer. So updated language will inevitably shift consciousness to new heights of understanding. And yes, I have a gigantic smile on my face because I know how powerful this is for us and for the world. And it's due to the power of the word. Now he gives some examples, and I'm going to try and keep this brief because I know that we would like to get out of here on time. <laughs> but one of the examples that Paul Hussbelt gives that we often see in unity churches, right? And because we have all of these churches that we are a part of this network, that unity believes what Jesus taught. The, the kingdom of heaven is within and the Christ is within. And so we routinely say, I behold the Christ in you right? We hear that often. Well, the language, it creates the mistaken impression that the kingdom of heaven and the Christ are within us. <laughs> and I just had to share this one example before I move on. He states that this language that creates that mistaken impression that the kingdom of heaven and the Christ are within us is like a hot dog and a bun. <laughs> That while the kingdom and the Christ are within, the real me is the vessel, the bun containing them. So this perception, he goes on to say, may not be so subtle when we're not aware of what we're saying. It's all about opening our ears and listening to what are we saying, right? <sighs> so very important. I also want to point out that he made it a point to say that it is not really accurate for us to continue to refer to God with any of the usual pronouns like he and the increasingly popular she, I've heard that a lot, when we refer to God as he or she or mother, father, God, or father, mother, God, or da, 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 we continue the personification, one of my favorite words, anthropomorphizing a divine mind. Anthropomorphizing means that we are turning it into a being like us so that we can understand it. It's human nature. It truly is. But we are moving beyond that human nature, right? We're leaning into that spiritual being that we are. These pronouns are so loaded that they easily take us back to our beliefs of childhood. When we imagined a separate God, that long gray beard, you know, I always say skinny version of Santa. When we use this language, we're keeping in this, this imagery right here, I want you to take this into your mind, we're keeping one foot rooted in old theology, old belief systems that no longer serve us while the other is trying to gain traction in the new. I kind of feel like that right now. <laughs> and we all move through this. We move through this so often, so often, in the way that we speak to the people, in the way that we show up in the world. It's an every day, every hour, every minute practice. So it takes some effort. But it's worth it. One of the last examples that I want to give 
because this is one that my mom always shared with me. And the moment that she passed, I had a, a bigger and a better, broader understanding that this no longer served either one of us. The example is, we are like a drop of water in the ocean. And this metaphor implies that even though we have all the qualities of God, we are not totally of God. Is that true? I need to hear a big old no. Nope. Mm -mm. That is saying that we are not the totality of God. And that is incorrect. It implies that a piece of God or divine mind can be separated from the whole. Is this possible? Nope. Oh, I love hearing that. No, that's a powerful no. Yes. Okay. Because a drop cannot be separated from the ocean. Charles Fillmore wrote, and I love this. He said, individual consciousness is like an eddy or an ed. I didn't look up the pronunciation, but I did look up what this thing is. I'll get to it. And an eddy in the ocean. All the elements are found in the ocean, or that are found in the ocean, are also found in the eddy. All of it is within the all. And for every eddy may in due course receive and give forth all that is in the ocean. So when I look this up, there's a beautiful picture of the swirl in the ocean. And whenever there's this little tail that comes off of that, that's the eddy. So it's never fully separated from the ocean. It is an expression. It is that wave in the ocean because we are all expressing in individual ways, just like each wave that is in the ocean. We have never left the ocean. We are the expression of the ocean as the wave. The ocean being that huge body of water that is consistently in motion. The general patterns of the ocean flow. They reconnect. They experience. They reconnect. And it's always one. So I'm going to end with quoting Mr. Hesselbeck here. Well, he says, vigilance in our language, our use of language, will, will help us to better understand unity theology and raise our consciousness. Yes. I'm going to repeat that, and I want to hear how excited you are about this when I am done. Vigilance in our use of language will help us better understand unity theology and raise our consciousness. Woo! Yes! Yes, this is what I get fired up about. This is the six-year-old Rachel that knew she came here to share this message that we are on a journey towards a greater experience. As we claim unity theology with that language, it does not activate our embedded beliefs. We more quickly move and grow into the awareness of oneness or divine mind. And maybe our parents, our caregivers, our grandmas, maybe they were correct when they said, we really do need to watch our language. Bishop John Shelby Spong visited Unity headquarters and he said that unity is poised to be the faith of the future. Who believes this? Yes, I do. I have full faith in this, that we are poised to be the faith of the future. So we better be prepared for it because people are looking for something different. People are shifting. We have had a shift in the race consciousness and they are ready to start hearing things differently. And I am so excited for the love and the joy and the shift and the change and the growth that we 
are about to experience. We are embarking on this. And I am so thankful that I'm with all of you on this journey. Namaste. Now we have some announcements. I'll be really quick because, well, the Chiefs game isn't it until three, but you know, lunch plans. All right, <laughs> we have our spiritual gifts workshop and it's gonna be happening next Sunday after the service. We have a guest speaker, Alyssa will be here with us. And then we have a fantastic workshop where we're going to find out what our spiritual gifts are. Because you know what happens when we know what our spiritual gifts are? We know where to plug in and have fun and serve, right? It helps us know where our joy is found. The next is, ooh, I've got my book right here. The Eye of the Storm. We are going to take a, at least eight-week journey through the Eye of the Storm. Oh, if you got your books, raise them up high. <laughs> and Debbie, we ran out of time, but Debbie is going to have books available for purchase. She has gone above and beyond to make sure that she can get books at the price of five dollars very affordable we encourage we hope that everyone will will get the book if you don't already have a copy we will have copies here that will be available for purchase and we're going to start this november 5th so we're trying to get everybody prepped and ready right the next thing is we have directly behind us a table with candy on it and it's kind of making my mouth water now that i'm looking at it but this is for our halloween trick-or-treaters we're going to have our unity which is handing out bags of candy so we have the bags that we need please do bring in your candy we will be collecting candy and our friends of unity that joins together from one to three each Tuesday, we'll be filling those bags as part of their service project. So that will begin this Tuesday, carry on next Tuesday, and they're gonna be ready to rock and roll. So please do bring in your candy so that we can share that with our neighborhood. <sighs> and lastly, mm, mm, mm. the first Wednesday of every month, we have a prayer circle. And this is joined with Silent Unity at noon over the summer it was one o'clock so i do want to just voice it the time has gone back to noon and we invite everyone to come here to join in prayer to send to yourself that first wednesday of every month just one day of the month if you have time come on and stop by now we have our children's blessing okay Oh, we do have, I'm sorry, we have prayer chaplains. We, we have prayer chaplains available. Did, did you have a question? The plants. Yeah, so we're bringing the plants in today after the service. So bring out your muscles. Oh, and wheels. <laughs> Look at that, convenience. All right, so we're going to be doing that after the service. And like I said, we are grooving, we're rocking and rolling because these children are going to have a different experience of what unity, religion, and spirituality can be in their lives. And I'm so excited for this. So let's read our children's blessing and send it to our children and the inner child within. Children, you are a perfect expression of God and you are love, and you are loved just the way you are. And that goes for each and every one of you. So I invite you to join together for our peace song. And remember, we're kind of shifting things up with our metaphysically evolved prayer for protection as we practice this. So I'm right there with you guys. I'm right there with, this, with you in this shift. Let's join together.
Thank you so much for joining us here on YouTube to check out our videos. I hope that you enjoyed the message that you heard today. Hopefully it planted some seeds for exploration. If you like the video, make sure that you hit the like and subscribe to our channel so that you get notifications every time we have a new video uploaded. Have a wonderful day and know that you are loved.